What's up guys and welcome back to my Pokemon Sun and Moon video and we have a new trailer and a huge dump of new information regarding the new games. Um, this will be sort of a summing up video of sort of the, the information released on the website and such and some things that are highlighted in the trailer. I would likely do a full trailer analysis later on today and again then tomorrow there will be likely a, a proper, another analysis on something else and we'll talk about it when we get there. So the first thing to look at here is the fact that we knew have we knew have we now have the legendaries for Sun and Moon officially revealed, which are Solgaleo, as we knew already, and Lunala, except we have one less A, but it's pretty much the same. So Solgaleo is the Sun Pokemon with two N's and an E, so it's a bit weird. Uh, it's a Psychic Steel type, yes, a typing nobody predicted, I don't think. I know a load of people in the comment section um, of my speculation video were saying, oh, it could be a Steel type because of the sort of the plating on its legs and whatnot. But, I, you know, we all we thought, oh yeah, it looks like a Fire type mo signature move, it's going to be a Fire type, but no, Psychic Steel. So Psychic is, I guess, the, what they're using as like a mystical, sciencey stuff, I don't know. And Steel, who knows why. Its ability is Full Metal Body, which is a new ability, of course. Um, and it's very similar to Clear Metal, clear metal Body, however, uh, except Clear Metal Body means, uh, a Full Metal Body rather, means a Pokemon stats will not be lowered by the effect of opponent's moves or ability, which I think is exactly the same as Clear Metal, uh, Clear Body, uh, not Clear Metal, but Clear Body. Um, so it's pretty much the same, exactly. we've seen it before, but it's a new ability, so, uh, and some information, since ancient times it's been honoured as the Emissary of the Sun. It's referred to uh, reverence as the beast that devours the sun. Ooh. Holds a vast amount of energy in its body and shines with light when it's active. Has a flowing mane with remarkable resist resemblance of the sun. Its signature move is called Sun Steel Strike. Sun, Steel, and then Strike, I guess. Um, an attack that charges at an opponent with the force of a meteor, disregarding the target's ability. So it's basically a move that has, you know, um, has, I can't remember the, the ability now, you guys know what I mean, Mold Breaker, it's a move that has Mold Breaker on it, so I'm guessing, I don't know what typing it is, there's no mention of what typing Stun Steel Strike is, it could be a Fire type, it could be Steel type, uh, it's likely Steel I suppose, um, but it's just basically like Mold Breaker in a move. And of course we have Lunala, it's called the Moon Pokemon with two O's, so it's a bit weird there again. It's a Psychic Ghost type, so Psychic is common between these two, except one is Steel and one is Ghost. And its ability is Shadow Shield. Shadow Shield is, we've seen it before, but it's a new ability. Um, it basically, a Pokemon, this Pokemon takes less damage from an attack that lands when they have full health points. So it's multi-scale for Lunala. So we've seen both of these abilities before, but they're just named differently now. Other stuff about Lunala, it's honoured since ancient times as the Emissary of the Moon. It's referred to reverence as the beast that cools the moon, so it doesn't devour it, it cools it. It's constantly absorbing light and converting it into energy. With its wings spread to absorb the surrounding light and glittering like a crescent moon, it resembles a beautiful night sky. Its signature move is called Moon Geist Beam and uh, releases an ominous beam, ominous beam of light that this disregards the target's ability. So again, Mold Break it in a move, and I guess this would be a ghost type move. Uh, we, you know, we, we already didn't know that. Then, moving on from the two legendaries, we have some more information about the Alola region and the characters inside it. First up, we have this whole map of the region, as you can see. Um, four islands, basically, four large islands you can see there. Uh, as I said, I'll do a full analysis of this sort of tomorrow, possibly. I'll look over the whole map and speculate on different locations, different sort of you know, possibilities and stuff like that. So that is that. The four islands rich in natural beauty and an artificial island too, so uh, that'll be interesting too. Many Pokemon that we've seen before occupy these islands, as we might have guessed. So the people of the Ho uh, of the Hoenn region, of the Alola region, it's very similar to Hoenn. Uh, we have the hero and the heroine, obviously, as us. Um, we've seen these guys before, so nothing too much to say there. And of course, we can choose our gender and how we look, as we knew already. Then we have Professor Kukui. So it's actually Kukui who's the professor. Hala, I think it's Hala, is his name. Is obviously not the professor, but just a friend of Kukui, possibly his, his father, who knows. But Professor Kukui is Alola region's dependable Pokemon professor. Lives near the home and looks out for us. He's passionate about research into Pokemon moves and sometimes takes direct hits Pokemon from where there is something to be learned. So instead of looking at evolution or other stuff they looked at in the past, this professor is looking at Pokemon moves. Interesting. Then we have Lily, someone we've never seen before, but she is a mysterious girl who assists the professor. She's about the same age as us, and she's working with Professor Kukui. She's working as the assistant for personal reasons. She's not fond of making Pokemon fight, but she does read against the bad many books. She will play an important role in the story of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Interesting. So this girl might be a rival of sorts. She doesn't like making Pokemon battle though, so it's possible that she doesn't do it at all. Um, so, but it is likely she tied in, ties into the plot somehow. Um, possibly 
working against the evil team, whoever they are, uh, because obviously she doesn't like how they treat them, something like that. And then we have our friend Hal. This is the guy we saw before, he's called Hal, uh, he's the same age as our character, when we move we, we make friends with him. He's a real weakness for Malasada, a famous treat in the Alert region, who knows. But he's a big hearted boy who really loves Pokemon, so you know, that's pretty much that. All of the characters we've seen so far in Sunny Moon, no mention of the evil team yet though. And then we have some cool features to look at. The first of these is the new QR code scanner, which is a bit weird in my opinion, but um, it'll be interesting to see. Obviously it's using the, uh, the 3DS's camera, but we get to meet new Pokemon using the QR code scanner if the cage will open. Basically, QR, sc QR scanner function allows us to see Poke information about Pokemon when we scan the patterns for the QR code. Um, when you scan it in, you can check the information about the Pokemon that corresponds to that code. There are code patterns in various places all around you, so try scanning them, so it might be on websites and stuff like that. We can register Pokemon in our Pokedex by doing this, by scanning in a special QR code, um, you know, special QR pattern. You can register Pokemon of your Lola region in your Pokedex and find out where they live. If you scan it and you haven't caught it yet, you can check its habitat and search out. So I guess it's more of a case of you can scan it and you can find out where it is, so then you can go and find it. It's not like you scan it and you get the Pokemon in your Pokedex straight away, because that would be too easy. Um, but, you know, you read it in, and some of the stuff is Pikachu, you know, for example, this option is Pikachu pops up, tells you the stuff, and you can check it through your Pokedex, and you can see its habitat. So yes, that is that there. And it's a very interesting picture, I'm guessing it's from the Pokedex, um, of location. And it's a very interesting place, because I believe that's on the island we've seen already. But um, we haven't seen any areas where we can catch Pokemon quite yet. But you can then share QR code patterns of your Pokemon, uh, of, of Pokemon in general, if you've caught, and of course then your friend, you can change it with your friend sort of thing. The other new feature for Sun and Moon is that we have a Rotom Pokedex now. So instead of just having a Pokedex Pokedex, we now have a Rotom inside a Pokedex, so it's sort of combining two of them. So he's our ally on the journey. It's a convenient tool, obviously. Um, but we receive from Press Kukui a special Pokedex that's known as the Rotom Pokedex, inhabited by Rotom. Uh, and it does much more than read info, it sparkles with its own personality. And it can show you your current location, your next destination, and also give you advice on where to go next, um, based on conversations you have with others apparently. So basically it's going to be similar to Navi from these other series. It's going to be like, hey, 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 do this, do that, hey, what's up, you know, yeah. it might be done well, or it might be really annoying like Navi. Who knows? I guess we'll find out when we actually play the games. But that's really all the new information we've got so far. If I just quickly check the Japanese site, of course, to see if there's anything new there. I was all, you know, looking at, um... The English site, but apparently the Japanese site has not put anything on quite yet at all. Um, Trailer 5, see if there's anything new there. I don't think there is because it doesn't look like it, but uh, yeah, it just doesn't say anything about that. Who knows? Anyway, so that's all the new stuff. As I mentioned, I will likely do a full analysis of the trailer that came out as well and look into it and pick out some extra stuff there. Um, and also, again, probably tomorrow, I will do a full map analysis of the Alola region. If you guys have spotted anything so far, and you know, think any thoughts or anything like that, let me know down below, but also be sure to let me know what you think about Solgaleo and Lunala's typings as well, because that's very quite interesting, nothing we expected, and also the other features in the game like the Rotom Pokedex and stuff like that. Are you like, excited for it, or do you think it's going to be really annoying to have yet another thing in the game telling you what to do? Let me know down below what you think, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, I'll be seeing you next time, thank you for watching, goodbye my friends.